Oh, jeez. Carol Bird, we'll open up with you. You got my face looks like I'm um, a ghost. It does, doesn't it? Uh, John, as you're approaching this week, do you talk to the guys at all about what Appalachian State just did for four wins in four days or what maybe Georgia did back in 2008 at the SEC? No, um, I'm staying focused on this team. Uh, I gave them all that kind of stuff about a week ago, week and a half, be, before the South Carolina game, that, you know, whatever you guys want to do, you're going to be capable of doing it, but you got to do it together. You can't worry about how you're playing for you. It's how you're playing for us. I keep after, uh, even in practice uh, yesterday, we passed up two open shots, and what did they lead to? Turnovers. And then lay up down the other end. And I, you, you just keep taste, testing the water. And mainly because I missed three in a row, four in a row. I don't want to shoot another one. You have to. The best chance we have, maybe you'll bank it in. And if you miss another one and we rebound, be happy, not into you. And just continue to, you know, talk to them about being connected and, and um, you know, the things that they've gone through that prepare them for this moment. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's a little different, but it isn't, I mean, this is, um, at this time of year, you leave no, nothing on the table. I'll give you an example. Great thing about the last game is I got Lance in there. I got Cam in there. Uh, Dante was in, even though he missed a bunch of shots, he was all in there. Um, you know, and, and so now all of a sudden you got this full team, um, you know, I'll, I'll, let everybody know training staff and the medical staff came to me about Terrence last week. And I said, you know, if he can get through individual work two days without limping, if he's limping, I'm not even, I don't care what you tell me, he's not playing. So he did. And I said, okay, now we're going to throw him into some of the scrimmaging. Does he pick us up or take us back? If he takes us back, he can't be in right now. Um, and so he's had a couple good days. The great thing is for, for us and for him, uh, one, first one on the floor, first one on the bus. He wants to do this for the team. He understands their game. He may not play a game. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. He wants to do it for the team. He understands he's not going to make up. He did not play till since Christmas. Not going to make everything up. But if it gives us one more body, one more opportunity with a player because at this time say you go in and, and you just look awful well maybe it's not your day let somebody else play because it's all about advancing and so he's been you know it's all about team for him he just said whatever this team needs from me uh i'm here if it's if i don't play i'm fine if you want to put me in fine i'm ready to go now i i won't change the rotation of what we're doing but there may be a point that I say, let's give him a shot. Let's see how he's doing. Jerry Tipton, go ahead. John, how accurate is it to think that uh, you guys are the hunter, not the hunted, or at least not as much the hunted as you usually are? And how much does that help or how does that factor? I think it helps this team because now their, their focus is just chasing. Um, you know, one of the things I'm going to have to do, you know, I, I mentioned that you want to have a full roster because you don't know what's going to happen and you want them all prepared to play. And I think we, we have a bunch now. But the second piece to that is this team has really been affected by runs by the other team. Uh, normally, you guys know what I do. I let the team figure it out and work it out and then call a timeout. Well, with this team, I'm not sure I can do that. So can't go home with timeouts. I may have to use them early. Um, a guy passes up an open shot, turnover, comes down. All right, we hurry. You could see we're panicked, timeout. Let's, let's settle. Come on guys, we're fine. Um, we get a big lead and all of a sudden, a guy goes crazy and tries to make a home run play and turns it over, they, they shoot it. We miss it. They throw it ahead. Another three bang timeout. So, I mean, it's a little different with every team I coach. You're trying to be what they need me to be. 
Um, you know, we need Keon. He's got to come with great energy. I don't care if he's making shots. Look, you know what they said to him today? If you get the ball in the middle of the lane, I said, he gets the ball in there. How, how many shots in there do you want him to take? One of the guys said 100. Shoot 100. Just that's your shot. Catch it and shoot it in there. So they're really, and the team was encouraging to Terrence. Like there was no, I mean, you know, BJ and better. And, um, you know, the guys were talking to, um, you know, Isaiah about, you can't, you can't tell a golfer, don't hook it now. Don't hook it. Don't hook, don't hook it. Cause he's going to hook it. Well, you also can't tell a player, don't foul, don't foul, don't foul. Cause you end up fouling. And all we're saying is play the guy before he catches it. If you get caught in a bad position, give him a basket. If you're in a pick and roll defense, don't you reach. Don't even think about it. We need you on the court. Be aggressive. Go block shots. Stay down. You can block it late. Play the man before he catches it, and you're not going to have issues. So, you know, there, there are different things um, that we've been talking through, and it's some of this stuff is it's all year the same, and they still pops up in a practice. Like, are you kidding me? What, what did you just do? I mean, why would you do that? We've been talking three months about this, but it's in there. They have habits that, you know, we're trying to create new habits, but those others are still in there. Kyle Tucker, go ahead. Yeah, Cal, I wonder if you could pull this off if you could somehow win these four games in four days and, and keep your season going, what, where would that rate for you in terms of. Let me, let me just career? say this to you, Kyle, if we can win tomorrow at 11, if we can win that game, I'm going to be dancing just that game. Forget about four. Let's just worry about the first game. If we can win the first game, this team, again, they've never been here. Now, you guys look and say, well, Cal, your record and all your years and tournament play, they weren't on those teams. This is a – Keon did not get to play in it last year. I don't know what to expect. What I'm hoping is they fight, they play fast, they take open shots, and they're connected defensively. That's what I'm hoping. But we don't know. We don't know. These guys, they haven't played in this stuff. John Hale, go ahead. Cal, sorry for being a little off topic here, but you tweeted your congrats to Moorhead the other day. I'm curious, when Preston Spradlin was on your staff back then, what did you see in him that made you confident he could do this, even though he wasn't in a direct coaching role for you guys? Yeah, but, but he also was running the camps and – um, uh, involved in all our meetings, our staff meetings was video, really bright basketball guy, really a level headed. Um, uh, a matter of fact, I, if I remember right, I put him in practices cause he could still play. I mean, he was a really good shooter and, um, but you know, uh, you know, he and Dom Lombardi, Dom is really when, when, uh, we, we talked, um, yesterday on the bus ride up and one of the things he said was coach dom has done unbelievable work he has been just an absolute giant and and that's what he's about i mean pushing the guys around him you know not worry about himself and i told him man he, he said my team was tough coach they were tough and so when you look at it you know, and I know that's how you win. And I told him, I said, you should go into this thing. Look, doesn't matter. No one's going to want to play them. You got some teams out there that are mid-major teams that you're like saying, let's, who, who wants to play them? Our case, we're worried about a game tomorrow at 11. But I'm happy uh, that those guys have done what they've done and they're in the NCAA tournament and they won their league and, you know, it's just been good. Larry Vaught, we'll come to you next. John, this may be an unfair perspective, but just sitting here where I am watching you, you seem kind of more 
energized and more rejuvenated, maybe a little bit more optimistic than what you were just a week ago. Is that a bad perception on my part? Um, yeah, probably. But I, uh, I, I would say um, I have been, I have been positive about this team. You know, when we started getting it going, the problem is they revert and then they start again and then they revert and then they start again. And most of it's based on the way you have to play winning basketball. One is really hard. Like it's hard. It's physically hard. It's mentally hard. It's tough. Rather not have to do that. It also means you have to share. You got to be more about your teammates and yourself. Yeah, that sounds good, coach, but I want to get mine. And everybody that's calling me is saying, I got to shoot the ball and you're the best player. And why don't you shoot more? And, you know, I'm hearing all that. And, you know, I, I you know, I need, and, and then the other thing is, again, you got to take the plays that are there for our team. Yeah, but when I miss, you know, I'd rather do something else because I'm kind of embarrassed. I missed three wide open shots and now I got to, I mean, and then we revert. And then when they figure out we can't win this way, they go back. But I haven't, I haven't budged on this. I haven't cracked them. Feel good coaching them. And today I was great. And then when I'm on the court teaching and coaching, it reminds me why I do this, you know, and going through the tough sledding, why am I doing this? But when I'm on the court, I'm coaching and teaching. You're like, this is why I do this. When I, when I see guys getting better, when I know the impact of the program, you know, it was funny. Um, it was Leon Rose's birthday yesterday and he and I talked and he talked about Emmanuel quickly and thanked and what you guys do and how they learn to fight and make their way. He said, Cal, I got to tell you, game ended last week in Madison Square Garden, played okay, played pretty good. And I'm walking out of the building. He's in Madison Square Garden getting up shots for another 40 minutes. That's what this is, man. You, you are responsible for you. You have to master your craft. This isn't Showtime AAU. This is about learning to fight. And you know what? As I do this and know where it Did we lose, Coach? Okay. I, mean, I lost you. <laughs> Yeah, we lost him. Give me kind just a crazy some. year that way. Oh, he's back. Okay, great. Ken Spencer, go ahead. Um, yesterday, I asked Keon about, you know, last year and the day that you guys were on the court when everything kind of got shut down. And he said he thought something was up because you kind of just let the team do their own thing on the court, really didn't say much during that time. Did you already know that everything was going to be shut down? And what was that like to have to tell them that there was no, there was going to be no tournaments? Yeah, I kind of got word what the NBA had done. I said, well, then it's done. And I said, there's no way we're doing this. And then within 10 or 15 minutes, they shut it down. Um, well, it was devastating. I mean, we won the lead by three games. We had, you remember what we looked like when we were in Vegas? Utah beat us, Ohio State beat us. We looked out of whack, out of sync. We came back, we weren't good. And then all of a sudden, we're one of the best teams in the country with a chance to win the national title. And it was all jerked away from these kids. And, you know, I, I it's kind of like I said with uh, Davion, I said, Davion, when you made those shots, bang, 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 you have no idea what Rupp Arena would have done. It would have erupted. It would have taken the roof off. You would have been 60 years from now laying on your deathbed. The last thoughts in your mind would have been no shots in that fan base going crazy. You didn't get to experience it. Well, guess what? They didn't get to experience the NCAA tournament and making a run to win a national title. Um, and, and I was, it was just unfair, but it was unfair for everybody. The whole, think about what we've been through and, and for this, this program, not having summers and not having the fall and having a ridiculous preseason schedule, which put us on our heels. If you have two or three more wins, we're not in this position right now. 
And, and, you know, you had teams that played the kind of schedule that gave them the wins that got them going a little bit. So just been all crazy. My focus though, hasn't changed. It's been, how do I let these kids know I'm with you and I'm not budging. Now I'll say this, I'm holding them accountable. If you're watching me coach, this ain't like, uh, Hey, go do what you want. No, we're playing and I'm holding them accountable, but they know I'm for them. They know it. And, and that's what I want it to be about. Now, if we're to make a run, we're to win tomorrow. It'll be because they want to, that's what it'll be. And my hope is um, today was a great day for them. My hope is they get up, they feel refreshed. We have a team full of guys playing for each other, being responsible for themselves and what they have to do, but being about their teammates. Okay, coach, we'll take two more. John Wong, and then we'll finish with Jeff Drummond. Hey, John, it seems like you want to push the pace a little bit more with this team the past couple of weeks. I read someplace where you're 0-12 when you score less than 70 points, and yet in the tournament, teams usually want to slow it down. What's your message to the team in terms of playing fast, playing reckless, and playing free? Well, we've we've wanted them to play fast all year, and, and we knew uh, from the beginning, but it, you can still play fast and post the ball. And we've worked on it. And my thing is, if you have an open shot, shoot it. I don't care if you're 0 for 7. I don't care if the last few games you're 0 for 12. You must shoot open shots. The other stuff leads to turnovers. Um, we're a team um, that we're going to shoot more threes than normal team that I've coached. Why? Because we're not real good layup shooters. Like, if there's bump and grind, that's when you see shots that you say, did he just do that? We're better off shooting jumpers than doing that, but we're good in the post. Our three guys that we throw it to are shooting a really high percentage in that. So let's throw it to them. Uh, every team is a little bit different. Um, I'm hoping that if we had to, uh, we could shoot a low percentage and still win games. I mean, you think of the Florida game. We're up one with three minutes to go. We're four for 20 from the three. And we're up one with three minutes to go. Those are the teams that I've historically had. If it's slower, we win. If it's faster, we're fine. Would we rather play faster? Yes. What if you make us play slow? We'll beat you that way. This team, again, we could say, oh, and 12. But, and if you look at those 12, you could say, holy cow, with a minute to go, 10 of those 12 could have gone either way. And they didn't go for us. But let me say this. How about that that... We've been through that. Um, they haven't been able to experience any of the good about being at Kentucky. And they're still standing and still swinging and saying, bring it, let's go. That's a heck of a thing. And I'm proud of them because of that. Now, let's see if we get through tomorrow and see what happens. But tomorrow's going to be hard. I mean, it, it was a double overtime game. It took... Uh, uh, Dante making seven threes, two of them banked in, and it took us to double to get them. Their guard play is good. Their big men are good. They're a better team at this point, but so are we, and we're different. We're not playing the same way we played then. All right, Jeff German finishes off. Hey, yeah, Cal, you talked about the importance of the, the focus being on just one game. And, and your MO has typically been kind of to shorten that rotation uh, for a one-game scenario. I'm, I'm wondering about that versus the conventional wisdom of, you know, trying to do this four days in a row, how you play off that with using your depth. Uh, I'm, it's not – no, you, you're just trying to win this game, then we'll worry about the next game later. We just – we're going into this. If I need to use the entire roster – there will be no pitchers left. I'm, I'm using every pitcher I can, the knuckleballer, the curveballer, the, the fast pitch, uh, the middle reliever, the, the, the last inning, I'm, I'm throwing everybody. Now, what if the pitcher that we start the game with is really in a groove? Then we won't go to the bullpen. We won't. We'll just go with who we have. 
Um, this is not about, okay, it's a 10 point game. Let's get us some subs. So we're no, no, no. You're playing to win a game. Everything you're doing, your mentality is let's go leave nothing on the table. Um, including timeouts, you do whatever you have to, to get through. And it's going to be a hard game. And I told them that I said, guys, every game we play in this tournament, there's not going to be any 20 point blowouts. This thing's going to come down to the wire and we got to be tougher and fight and throw daggers more than they do or your season ends. So that's what it'll be about. All right. Thank you so much for your time, coach.